Hi everybody. I just wanted to give a little bit of background on the book of Adam and Eve to give you a little bit of um, more understanding of where it came from. Um, it is an amazing book. In my opinion, it should have been added into the canonized version of the Bible that we know today, um, but it was not added. If you're not familiar with how they put the Bible together, I do advise you to kind of check into that, um, being that it was all kind of different religious sects getting together and choosing what fits for their religion and their belief, and the other books were left out if it did not fit with their belief and their understanding, which I think is um, really a shame. There's so many good books out there that um, offer so much more help and so much more information. And we come to find out that the Heavenly Father was not as mysterious into declaring the end from the beginning. And as a matter of fact, in reading the book of Adam and Eve, he declares the very end. All throughout. I think it probably would have helped me a whole lot sooner in my walk had I have known about this book. Um, it just strengthens your foundation and helps you understand who actually came and saved you and what he planned on doing from the very beginning to uh, make good on his covenant with Adam. Adam was the very first covenant and it went through his seed on through. And the canonized version of the Bible kind of leads us in that. But um, anyway, it's an amazing book. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite of all the books in the Bible. And I do get emotional when I read sometimes because my heart gets into it and... Um, I can understand the pain and the affliction and can imagine uh, the grief that they had to endure. Um, also, I always found it kind of odd that in Genesis, when we're reading it, um, Adam and Eve, they sinned and there was no remorse from what they had done. It's just the judgment that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, had given unto them. And then the, um, the punishment, you know, for the serpent and for Satan himself. And it kind of just goes on into the next story. Being with their seed. I always wondered, well, where's the repentance here? Why is... I know that if I went from an estate of like, being with Abba Father and walking the garden with him to, you know, an abundant land uh, garden that had everything I needed and then going into a dry land that I was going to have to work with my hands to make the food come up and that's something that I had never done. It just seemed odd to me that it was never mentioned of the remorse or repentance. And um, this book of Adam and Eve... It just tells all of it, and I love it. Um, before I get into the specifics of it, I'm going to read to you. Um, I do want to mention that out of all the books that are out there that should have been added into the canonized version, mind you, the forgotten books, the um, the Apocrypha, the lost books, I mean, there's there's several, and the Dead Sea Scrolls, Things of that nature. Even though I know the Dead Sea Scrolls came after. I understand that. But still. Um, all these books that are available. I would caution you. That you do your research on the author. That has translated. Whatever book you decide to get. And see what kind of person that they are. Kind of like their bio. Um, I've found in my studies that James H. Charlesworth is a very um, trustworthy man and full of integrity. 
He was an archaeologist, and a matter of fact, he's one of the ones that had found some Dead Sea Scrolls and oversaw all the translation um, over most of them that we know today. Um, he also was over the translation of the book of Adam and Eve that I've been reading you. He is, um, I, I encourage you to do your, to do your own looking into this, but from my studies, James H. Charlesworth, any of the books that he has translated or oversaw, very good choice. I'm going to go on ahead and just read it to you and tell you what it says. The version that we have here is the work of an unknown Egyptian. And the reason why they say it is an Egyptian is because it was found in Egypt. But the only thing was is that the version that they had found in Egypt was written in Aramaic to begin with. If you don't know anything about Aramaic, Aramaic was written um, by the Hebrews and it was one of the oldest outside of Paleo-Hebrew um, writings. So that would mean that um, a Hebrew is the one that wrote this book and not an Egyptian. And that's what makes this book really, really special in my opinion. Him went to a Dr. E. Dr. Trump. Trump had the advantage of the Aramaic original, which makes our bridge over the gap of many centuries a direct one. The reading of these books is an adventure, and you will find the mind of a man fed by passion, hopes, and fears of a new and strange earthly existence, unrestricted in the zest of self-expression. So I looked for reprints, and I did find um, a few reprints that um, were nothing like this one, so they changed so much stuff. I wanted to mention this book of Adam and Eve was first published in 1882. This is the version that I have. And um, so just to give you an idea of kind of how old it is, there are reprints. And like I said, at the end of the reading of the book of Adam and Eve, I will provide for you the link of the book that I found that is um, so far been exactly anyway, like this. there's so many more books in here and I'll be reading those as we go but for right now this is the introduction to Adam and Eve and I hope that you were blessed by hearing it and that you hear all the, the similarities in scripture and you can see as to where it's taken out and um, and how it flows so beautifully with the scriptures and that is a surefly way of telling whether or not what you are reading is credible or not. And we understand the character of Yahweh. So if anything that you read goes against that character or against the laws that we do know from the canonized version, you put that up on a shelf and you do not have any weight to it until Yahweh brings understanding or if he altogether says, nope, that has been added to my word and that is not it. So, um, just my opinion there. Always compare everything to by the, um, by the scripture that you know. And that will make for a good line of um, standard on what you accept and what you don't accept. I pray that you guys have a great day. And, um... May Yahweh bless you at the reading of his word.